Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We're going to continue our flight into this amazing world of Chinese language. Um, and please don't feel obliged to memorize anything at all. This is basically a kind of a storytelling, um, a way of me to reaching out to my origin, to the culture I came from. And uh, you know, you're just taking a tag along. That's it. <laughs> and last time we talked about lie zu, lie zong, uh, zu zong. Basically, it's our two ways, two characters meet with um, you know the generation, the one two generations before you, and the other ones are zong are everybody before you, all the generations before you. So together, they are simply ancestors. Ancestors are very important in Chinese culture. Um, okay, so here is another evidence of why ancestors are taken really seriously, <laughs> and gives you a little bit, um, yeah, bit more of um, relaxed, uh, like a colloquial Chinese almost, because you can see this is five character. Normally, Chinese, you know, you know, elegant formation is four character is enough. But when we make three or five, uh, kind of not um, perfectly packed way of expression, that's probably some uh, colloquial way of expression. So, zu fen mao qing yan. And also, I did some uh, layout change so that every time I'm going to show you the original character and place it right below the simplified contemporary Chinese version, so we can see easily uh, where things came from. Um, so ancestor we're talking about, um, the left side is um, communicating to God, basically, um, you know, divine sign decoder. Um, and that's the left. The right side um, is the sound maker. And oftentimes in Chinese sound maker also have certain meaning. And that paired with the uh, you know the divine decoder uh, it, it makes sense so over here you can see because okay so we talked about it's a three no it's two generations before you right you can regard this as okay you are the baseline here here's you and then two stack up <laughs> and that's the zu generation grandparents generation and i can also view it like this is a shape that very often um, when Chinese people hold their ancestor, um, a wood block thing with their ancestor's name carved in as a, a memory, as a, you know, a personal ceremonial a household in their household to communicate. So um, besides divine, they do have a place dedicated place a location and probably a certain ceremony as well to to communicate to decode the the meaning from the ancestors um so that way they're kind of connected to wisdom you know yeah, with the universe and with uh, their lineage their generic tyings right so that's two okay then we have the left side the right side i mean even if it's a Another, if you look at the contemporary Chinese, it's okay. You can see the soil, the, the ground. Um, I mean, how, how do we know it's soil? It's two horizontal lines with one vertical line. Easy enough, right? So two horizontal lines is, um, this is regarded as the ground level, the ground, um, the distinction between the underground and the above ground. Okay, let's say that. So the vertical one is something growing in there. And um, the bottom is probably the, the same, um, the, the plants most likely, root. So the environment over here, everything underground is the tu, the soil. The right part is ben, is a sound maker and contemporarily it's a fen and also visually a changed, simplified and to make it even, you know, <laughs> Uh, more writable and also uh, easy to recognize. Um, but the originals, even if it's a sound maker, it can make a lot of meaning. If you know about Chinese ancestral, I mean, eventually we all become ancestors to somebody else, right? So <laughs> um, the, the tomb, the burial, 
um, side. So in Chinese culture, some people, uh, I'm not sure like what's the percentage, but have this if they can afford to. So um, they would create this underground berry, berry ground, um, you know, try to hide it, of course, because there's a whole profession and a long lineage um, and the tradition, I guess, of grave diggers. So they will, you know, it's kind of a um, adversarial um, way, right? One is try to hide, try to not to be discovered, not to be dug up, and the other one is try to find it. So this bury um, treasures, something precious, underground. So this is our monetary sign back then. Um, this is a seashell. So you can see kind of something like a soft body with a shell. And then the top is plant plant. So it's kind of like, okay, something already growing on top. So probably it's hard to tell if there's a tomb buried below, but that's the, the discover. I could try to hide it underground somewhere, the treasure, right? And, um, and this is soil, it's underground together. It means it's a tomb. So that's, you know, <laughs> attraction for the, um, um, the grave diggers. Okay, so Ma, we have this, <laughs> okay, the Ma character is a visual way to express a particular um, human used object. So the two, the circle with two horizontal lines is our eyes. So we talk a little bit about it. Why? Like a human eyes, the two eyes are placed horizontally, but for convenience of a space and the writing, like easy to write this way rather than this way, right? So for convenience of that, it's stacked up, become you know abstracted into a ver uh, vertically stacked two, uh, two lines to mean two eyeballs. Um, or, I mean, the, the, the eyeball in between, right? So this is the whole eye, this is the eyeball, okay? Um, and then the top of it is a hat shape. And the two ones probably, I mean, the two horizontal lines probably is the cushionings uh, within the hat. So this is a heavily headed person. Um, and sometimes because we don't want to depict everything on your face is overcrowded, overcomplication. Sometimes it's just use eyes, like one main feature on the face to represent that's the head, that's the, you know, here. And then over there is where um, the hat is used. So originally this word came from the, the hat. And so from this hat image, it became a verb. It means something tapped over um, an object mostly. I mean, starting from human head, but eventually can be applied to other kind of objects. So that, and this cap eventually become like, they can go like, a, they can go beyond and move beyond. So uh, in this context, I translate it as emit. So it's no longer capped, but from this wrapped, place, which is the tomb, right? Uh, from this place, uh, there are things going, <laughs> you, um, going from, like a floating out of it. Okay, so qing, qing is our color of similar to blue, kind of a blue and green thing, because it came from this, okay, we talked about the soil symbol, right? So this is exactly that. And instead of just one vertical line, a stick, it's like underdeveloped plant. This one got some leafies going out. Right? So that's our plant, like in its grown form symbol. So that means the whole portion on the top means life, means something living. So it's obvious, it's visually uh, like a flourishing, right? It's, it's something definitely living in there. If it's just one vertical figure, it's probably hard to tell if it's living or dead, but with the leaves going out, it's definitely for sure, it's a living thing. And the bottom is the kind of abstracted form of uh, redness. Um, but it's, it's a sound maker borrowed over 
Mm. And a redness in my interpretation, because now it's like nobody can tell why there is the blue got a redness, you know, component underneath it. Um, in my interpretation, is um, it's this probably means because this looks like the sun. So this is this red character also related to the sun, right? Sun is the energy source. So it's like affirmation of again of something growing in there something is living so qing used to depict this bluish greenish you know turquoise color uh, in chinese um, but it came from something living living so we can we can see like if if it's a trees and especially if it's a mountain, if you look from afar it's kind of a bluish green color right so that's something living um, color and and if the ocean if it's water if you look at it from afar or if it's reflecting the sky color it's also kind of a blue greenish so something living something rich you know uh, having their life in there so that color eventually means any living things color okay I, so it's a bluish greenish color yen okay we have the left side here it means the the fire and the right side is uh the sound maker but i can interpret it as okay this again the soil symbol same as this bottom portion middle portion and here right um so this on the soil there this is the bird nest so this is kind of a, a tree abstract a tree trunk and some bird nest hanging below it um, and then this is a soil so I don't know if this is like a fire burning um, something <laughs> the nest on above the ground hanging over there visually it looks like that but together it means um, the smoke is going and I mean visually this looks pretty much like a smoke going upward and this, I can visualize it as um, almost like a candle uh, on a candle stand, right? Um, so however way that can help tell the story to relate how this color, I mean, this character um, makes the meaning of a smoke. I mean, eventually we use like a cigarette smoke as well. That's the same character, but it came, I mean, from the beginning, there's no I couldn't say that. I don't exactly know if there are smoking from way early on. Um, but okay, Zu Fen Mao Qing Yan, your ancestors' tomb are emitting this bluish greenish smoke. It sounds kind of uh, outer worldly, right? Um, I mean, some people say there are, uh, there are such phenomena, but okay, ancestors' tomb is important, is significant. Uh, in that it's, it relates to, I mean, there are treasures better in the buried in the ground if um, nobody discovered it, right? And your ancestor's body buried underground and the, the tomb is supposed to be a symbol of your connection to the past. And if it sends you a signal, <laughs> a smoke, uh, right? Um, and a particular color that's uh, representing life um, that really is a blessing that's interpreted read as a blessing from the ancestor to you and what that blessing will bring is most likely prosperity and how can you get pro you know how can you get wealthy or um, climb up the social ladder um, most likely is uh, become a uh, official or or you know a certain rank on the government agency right so that's back then like how you can go somewhere is to be um you know higher ranked official basically that's that's what would make your ancestors most proud of you and i put a painting of this burial site uh in the southern center part of uh china called Chang, uh, Hunan Changsha. Um, and this is a location called Ma Wang Dui. And this is a Bu Hua. So this is painting. You can see very much detailed, dedicated. And the texture, the color, the shape, it's 
quite a quite a work artwork um, painted on fabric and that's preserved over spanning 2000 years and um, so basically this is top portion is heaven the bottom is some sea animals and the middle is human world and there are all kinds of beasts animals and because this is in a burial site so this basically paint idea of ancient people's um, concept of where they are positioned. So besides this living portion, you have a whole other world, you know, the heavenly world and the underworld or under the water world, and there are sun and the moon. So all kinds of um, imagination about how the world actually beyond our current living world is. So that's as a um, good wish for the dead for them to go somewhere you know in that other order of the world All right cash into the currency of thinking by one word a day see you another day